During day seven of the double murder trial of Kyler Eust, his defense team began presenting its case to jurors in Cass County. KCTV5's Emily Rittman was in that courtroom today. She joins us live outside the Cass County Justice Center now with more on what their witnesses had to say. Emily? Carolyn, the jury was outside of the courtroom for much of the morning as the judge spoke with the prosecutors and defense attorneys. They made arguments about what evidence would be presented to jurors. Today, the judge, without jurors present, heard from a man who was once considered a possible suspect in the disappearance of Kara Kopetsky. Law enforcement investigated Billy Bays after he reportedly made statements that he was present when Kopetsky died from an overdose. Today, he told the court he did not make those statements. That you disposed of Kara Kopetsky's body. No, ma'am. Did you ever tell Mr. Stotch that Ms. Kopetsky was placed in the trunk of a car? No, oh, ma'am. Did you ever tell Mr. Stotch that her body was disposed of in a rural area? No, ma'am. The defense's first two witnesses were called to try to make jurors question the state's timeline of events surrounding Kopetsky's disappearance and death. Brett Bishop told jurors he received a call from Kopetsky asking for a ride on the evening of her disappearance. That would not fit the state's timeline of when Eust is accused of killing Kara. Phone records do not show your phone call that you claim to receive from Kara on 5-4. Then the defense asked Deborah Heflin, who previously reported to law enforcement that she saw who she believed to be Kopetsky while walking near her home on May 4, 2007. She says Kopetsky was crying and alone. Then she heard a car come by that she assumed was full of boys. Blood curdling scream. The state asked how a busy mother who was wrangling children could be certain she saw Kopetsky when she didn't realize it was her until after watching the news and seeing photos that Kopetsky was reported missing. But you'd never met Kara before? No, I did not. You'd never seen her in person? No. The judge decided that jurors would not hear from two corrections employees about what was found inside of use half-brother Jessup Carter's jail cell after he took his own life while in jail. The defense has alluded to Carter as a possible alternative suspect and wanted to be able to present a photo of a note that was inside of his cell. Reporting live, Emily Rittman, KCTV5 News. We've had semi-trucks.